Hey, what's up? Hey, we're about to jump into our agency training call that we do every week with the Star Agency, with all of our Star Agents all over the country. We will have tons of agents on this call. We'll focus on training them, giving them, getting them better, anything they need. We have a group app where all of our agents talk and they communicate. They're able to tell us what they want to talk about, when they want to talk about it. Today's is special because we had one of our agents ask the same question five different times, five different ways. He, he, he actually made a sell that he wouldn't normally make because of one of the calls that we did just last week. So today's call, we're going to talk about how to ask questions, how to ask questions multiple different ways, to, and how you need to ask the same question in different ways, that you can continue to ask the same question in different ways to get results. And so we're going to jump in, we're going to do the call. It's going to be good. Thanks for joining. Don't simply stop at the word no. Somebody, you know, we, we go out, we build value, we do these things, we're not stopping at the first go around. I've got Cody here, and Cody, what I want to talk about today is last week John had a situation where he closed a sale, but it took him about five different times. He had to ask the same question, he had to ask them to buy, but in five different ways. Right. I know that you've done that. And I want to pick your brain on that subject right now. Absolutely. What's up, team? How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Fantastic. Awesome. Good, good, good. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Yeah, something that is something I want to talk about because I'm a firm believer that you can ask when you're out in sales, when you're, when you're, whether you're making calls, whether you're running an appointment, whether you're trying to get to, like, for instance, I gave John a real-life scenario last week. This is a quick story. I'm a big storyteller. I think it's important in sales. And... I went to a home literally about two and about 26 months ago, about two years and two months ago with an agent by the name of Tom. We went to Joplin, Missouri. It was a final expense appointment. We went to the appointment. We were in the middle of the appointment. We were in the, in the, in step two of my four steps. We were in the fact finding portion and we were sitting there in the fact finding portion. And I, the guy didn't know a lot about his policy. He didn't know a lot of, a lot of details about what was going on, about what he had, and so I asked the question. I said, do you know where your policy is? Well, first of all, there's better ways to word questions like that. So, but I said, do you know where your policy is? He said, no, I don't. Well, I knew that without this policy, we were not going to make a sell because he didn't know anything. But I knew that if we found some details and we started to fact find and start asking questions, we could do much better and have a much better chance of making the sale, helping, help, helping this guy, making some money, that kind of thing. So he said, no, I don't know. And I said, because I believe that you can ask the same question over and over and over and over and over again, as long as this, the, 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 the same question is either accompanied with new information or asked sw slightly differently each and every time. So he, I said, do you know where your policy is? He said, no. I said, if you, if you knew where it was, where would it be? And he said, same question. Same exact question. I just worded it a little differently and assumed that he may know. Or I asked it or worded it to actually get him thinking and talking. And so when I asked that, he said, well, you know what? Um, yeah, it would probably be, if it was anywhere, it would probably be in that filing cabinet right there next to you. The, the dude's four, he's five feet from me and we're sitting in the living room. He's five feet from me and I'm, and I'm like literally sitting right by this filing cabinet. I just asked the guy if he knew where his policy was. We're literally sitting in the living room together and he says, no, I don't have, a, I, I don't know. When in reality, he had an idea of where it was. So the reason I tell that story is to kind of set the stage, set the mood, to kind of get you thinking about just because... A client says no, or they don't know where something is. That doesn't mean that that's the truth. It may mean that they're not 100% certain, but everybody's got a guess. Everybody's got an estimate. Everybody's got a, an assumption of where something is. So when, we, when I added the second question, and I asked it a little differently, it was a company with new information, I, I assumed that I need to get this guy thinking about where his policy was. And when I ask it differently, guess what? We went over, we opened the filing cabinet, we looked. 30 seconds later, we had his policy and, and all was done. But I, I, the reason I use this story is about 95% of agents, 
and that's a guesstimate. That's just my assumption, and, and, and that's just what I assume is correct. About 95% of agents would have stopped after the first question. They would have never got his policy. They would have stopped at the first question. They would have never got his policy, and they would not have walked out of there with a sale because you couldn't because he had something. We didn't know what he had. Well, once we found out, we could give him more coverage, save him money, and give him cash value back, and give him some local agents that he didn't have. He was all about it. And so what, that's what's hilarious is I don't think he was lying by saying no. I just don't think I had given him enough time to think about it. Or I also think that I hadn't worded that question correctly. One thing to keep in mind here is there's a big difference between getting a no when you're on appointments yeah. and a, excuse the French, a hell no, get out of my house. Yeah. Yes, if you have that, we certainly understand and you need to get out of the house so you don't get it, ar ar arrested. But on the other hand, a no is oftentimes just simply a brush off, it's a postponement, it's a delay. Yeah. Many times people know that they need the product. We know they need the product because they clicked on the, on the advertisement. We know they are interested. However, just like me, people put off things that they need. You know in the back of your mind, this person needs it. However, yeah. these are delay tactics. Well, yeah, and, and he, he asked us to come to the appointment. He scheduled it. He was okay with it. You know, he wanted to talk. Maybe he was lonely. Maybe part of the fact that he wanted to talk was he just didn't know what he had. But without asking that additional question or without prying a little bit or at least getting them to think about it. And so I'm, I'm someone that it is, a, it is a, a personal rule of mine. If I ask a question... I'm going to get an answer. I don't care if it's my wife. I don't care if it's an agent. I don't care if it's a customer. I don't care if it's a sale. I don't care if it's my family, a friend. If, if there's a chance that they can give me a guess, an assumption, they can assume, or they can eventually know or not know, I'm not going to give up after one try. We're in sales. We're, we're trying to help better people's lives and sell insurance. When I got an insurance... I didn't get insurance to fail. 92% of agents fail in their first three years in this business, and this is one of the big reasons. They give up way too easy. Got an idea, Cody. And guys, this is not practiced. This is not re rehearsed. I'm putting Cody on the spot. I want Cody to sell me. You're going to hear a live role play right now, and I'm not going to be a very nice customer. <laughs> At any rate, pretend like, like he's gone through the entire sales process. We're now at the point of where he's asking for the order. This yeah. is exactly what we've been talking about. Let's listen up. Let's see it in action. Okay, what do you got? What are you thinking? Well, I... I like what you've shared, Cody, but, you know, I think I need some time to think this over. And that, that's fair. You know what? And we get that from time to time. Customers, they feel the need to think. And normally when they say that, maybe they don't, maybe they don't know enough about us. Maybe they don't know enough about the product. So what questions can I help answer to make sure that you're fully comfortable with what we're doing here? Because I think if, I, if, I, if we spend a little more time together, if I answer a little more questions, and if you fully trusted me, I fully trusted you, you fully trusted the product and the process, that we would just become best friends, you would love me for life, and honestly, uh, I'd love to welcome you a part of the family. Well, I, I appreciate that, but sometimes, I'm sure you understand this, sometimes, Cody, when we make an important decision, I try not to rush into things. Yeah. You know, I've learned that sometimes when I rush into things, I make the wrong decision. And so I'm trying to make sure that I don't do that. So that's the live sales meeting that they have every single week with uh, our star agency agents. And uh, just wanted to record that real quick so you could get a feeling of what Secure Agent Mentor does for our agents. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Daniel. I'm the video guy, uh, help with appointments as well. Uh, what kind of support do you have as an agent? 
Um, do you have somebody coaching you? Do you have a mentor? You know, it doesn't need to be us, but uh, I think it's important to emulate people that are successful. So if you have uh, any questions, give us a call, 883-9300. Go to secureagentmentor.com uh, and let us help you. Uh, and if not, find somebody that can, uh, somebody that's successful. So good luck, have a good rest of your week, and thanks for watching. See ya.